Hey, good morning everybody and welcome to the vlog. Today I'm excited because we're gonna get right started into some unboxing. An animal that I told you guys a while ago. Remember when I told you the list of things that I wanted to get for the Reptarium? Well, guess what? One of them showed up today. But we actually have two shipments that we're gonna be unboxing today. So what do you say we just push our problems aside, have an amazing day together, and get this day started with opening up one of my dream animals for the Reptarium. And like I had mentioned, I am excited about this shipment right now. It's been something that I have been dying for for quite some time. To be, totally, <laughs> to be totally honest with you, I may get another one of these that is larger, and I'm about to show you what I mean by that. Basically, a ton of monitor lizards are really cool, but there's one monitor lizard besides like the water monitor that I think is just a great educational ambassador because they're typically really big, they're very, very docile, and they're super cool. The problem is they stopped importing them a while ago, and you hardly ever see them anymore, so they're very hard to get. And this is a little baby. Oh my God, let's take a look and see. Oh my gosh, he is so cute. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Come on, little monkey. Oh my gosh, I am excited about this. Oh my goodness gracious. Look at that. <laughs> Guys, I am freaking out because I've actually never actually handled a baby black-throated monitor before. Now there's white-throated monitors and there's black-throated monitors. The black-throated monitors are from the east side of Africa, like Tanzania, and they get much larger than the white throats. So white throats are typically more south, like into South Africa and stuff like that. Still amazing animals. I love white-throated monitors for sure. The thing is, is that the black throats can get up to seven feet long. That's right, so these guys can get as large as a water monitor sometimes even larger up to 60 plus pounds and you hardly ever see captive babies so the opportunity to get a captive baby I jumped all over it and you remember a while ago when I went through my dream animals black throat monitors were one of them now like I had mentioned I actually might be getting a larger one here pretty soon too because it would be great for educational shows now and this guy's probably gonna take a couple years but look at how cute he is I mean that is the cutest little thing in the world it's so hard to believe that this animal animal is one day going to be seven foot long and this is a boy by the way the boys get larger than the females I definitely wanted a little boy but look at the pattern and the color on that animal right there on Believable. And again, they look a lot like a Savannah monitor, right? A lot of people would be like, oh, that's a Savannah monitor. They have longer neck, they have that black throat, obviously, and they are unbelievable. They also get much larger than Savannah monitors. And this guy's got a little bit of an attitude already. He's puffing up a little bit. But the truth is, is that they tame out super good. So the fact that we got him this size, we're gonna start target training him. We're gonna feed him a lot of really nutritious things like bugs as babies. But as adults, they typically eat whole prey animals. They'll eat, you know, rodents, they'll eat chicken, they'll eat beef, they'll eat birds, they'll even eat snakes and lizards in the wild. But in captivity, we'll certainly give him a really varied diet and get him really amazingly tame. I am blown away, guys. I tell you what, I wanted a black throat monitor for a long, long time. And so as soon as I saw this one available, I was like, I've got to grab it. I've got to have it. Unbelievable. Now, I do have another shipment that I'm going to be unboxing, but it's not here yet. So it'll be here maybe in the next hour or so. But uh, I'll be honest with you, it's not going to be as exciting as this one right here. Unbelievable, guys. So we need a name for this little mascot right here. Again, a male black throated monitor. Comment down below. Let me know what you think I should name this little monkey. He is absolutely adorable. We ended up getting the little monkey set up here in this enclosure. Now what's important with these monitors, of course, is to have a really good hot spot. And we have something for him to climb up here. Also some back rock area and stuff like that where he can get close. So we want that to be about 110, 115 degrees. But we want the cool side to be about 82 to 84 degrees so he can get away from the heat if he wants. He's been set up in here for the last couple hours. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and see if he wants to eat a little cockroach. He is such a cutie and he's hiding in the back right there. So let's see what we can do. Here he comes. Yep, he took it. Ho, 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 that is such good news. Again, as he's this size, we're probably gonna feed him a lot of bugs, to be honest with you. The occasional pinky and stuff like that, not till he gets larger will we feed him uh, a lot more meats and stuff like that. This size, he's gonna eat a lot of bugs. And look at it, he's just hunting down that little bug right there. That is amazing, that is super cool. So we'll give him a few of these, uh, get him kind of you know all beefed up. We'll obviously start to train him in a few months. Right now, I'm just looking at health rise. So let's see if he wants another one. Here we go, buddy. Ah, he got it. This guy is on fire. I mean, he is ready to go. You want another one? We'll just keep on feeding them. Take it off the tongs. There he goes. Took it right off the tongs. 
That is a great sign that he's so kind of outgoing that even just a few hours after getting him, he's taking food right off the tongue. So this guy is amazing. Again, down in the comments, let me know what you think his name should be because he is absolutely phenomenal. Well, this is definitely a first for me. I'm not gonna lie. I walk by and we've got Champ, the blood python, just climbing up a tree. Now, blood pythons are extremely ground dwelling animals. I have never seen them climb ever before, let alone all the way up to here. He's just chilling out up on a branch. That is crazy. Of course, Sweetie is over in the corner right here. Champ is a T negative albino blood python, uh, is a male. And then Sweetie, of course, is the girl down here. Hopefully they'll breed this year. We'll see what happens. But nevertheless, he is on the move and that is crazy. Uh, it just goes to show you, no matter how long you work with animals, some Sometimes, and a lot of times, to be honest with you, they surprise you with things like this. And as promised, the second shipment came in. So let's go ahead and see what it's out again. This one, hey, listen, I love all animals, right? I love unboxing everything. Uh, isn't as exciting as a black throat monitor because these are things that uh, we've gotten before and these are basically just going on the website. So these aren't razors, but ooh, doggy, those are pretty. Let's see, what do we have here? We actually have, oh my gosh, these are, I didn't even know, these are great. So these are GHI Het for Lavender Albinos. Can you imagine, again, the Lavender Albino stuff, that black turns purple. So the GHI has a, an increase increased amount of melanin. Obviously, it's so busy like this, all that black in there. When this gets to a lavender albino, oh my gosh. I'm thinking GHI lavender albino blackhead maybe? Oh my goodness. So I'll be honest with you, uh, this is from my friend that sends me a bunch of stuff that he produces. I didn't even know he was sending me those. So that is incredible. I am super excited. Definitely gonna hang on to these. Maybe I'll sell one, but I'm definitely gonna keep the other one because I wanna work that project. That was exciting. So see, there you go. I said it wasn't that exciting. It turned out that it was exciting. And then lastly, we'll see what we have in this bag right here. And oh my gosh, some beautiful snakes for sure. So this is the last snakes that my buddy are hatching for the year. So we're not gonna get any shipments from him for the rest of the year, unfortunately. But next year we'll get a bunch more stuff. Of course, we got a little clown ball python right here. Looks like we have another clown ball python right here. You guys know that recessive clowns right now have been the hottest thing on the market. I mean, people love clown ball pythons. And it looks like we have just some het clown ball pythons here. And then finally, we have some pastel clown ball pythons. Now, I tell you, pastel clown ball pythons are amazing. You can definitely see why clowns have become so absolutely popular. They're a recessive mutation. They just make everything so beautiful. So there's all kinds of crazy clown combinations, but even something as simple as a incomplete dominant pastel bred into the recessive clown makes for these beautiful animals. And we were lucky enough to be the first people to ever produce pastel clowns. So they definitely have a very soft spot in my heart. You know that. So nevertheless, awesome shipment of ball pythons. Definitely surprised about those GHI hat lavender albinos. Like I said, one probably would be for sale. The other one I'm going to keep for sure. So uh, all in all, it was an absolutely amazing day for unboxing animals. Now that I'm back, I can kind of start to update you on salt and peppers thing. Now, let me just start by saying I know that this has been leaking for like over a month and stuff like that. And we've already done a ton of things to try to figure it out. Well, the one thing that I still had to make sure was the fact that it wasn't any of the seams. Because if it's the seams, that would be a massive of breakdown, right? And I did this once before where I shut the waterfall off for a day and I didn't see any leaks on the floor at all, right? So then it told me, all right, it must be the waterfall. Then we tried to seal the waterfall up and ultimately it didn't seem to work. It still leaked. So last time I actually turned the waterfall after I sealed it for a day, it didn't leak. So what I was thinking is what if it is actually the seams that are leaking and it just takes a day or so to build up enough to actually leak out. So now I've had the waterfall off for two and a half days and there is zero water on the ground. This is great news because it tells me that there is no seam. I don't have to tear the entire thing down. Now the only thing I have to figure out is where exactly in the waterfall is this leaking? Again, I've already showed you guys that I've got this open here and I can look underneath the waterfall and I don't see anything. There is no uh, seals, there's no tubes that are leaking, nothing like that. Somehow there is a crack somewhere in here, either here or inside here, that is unfortunately leaking somewhere in, and I can't even tell where it's leaking at to be honest with you. So I have my work cut out for me. I can do one of two things. I can just start sealing everything and just hope for the best, or I can actually peel away this part here and cut out some of the wood that's behind here and actually see if I can look and see where it's actually leaking. So anyways, just wanted to update you guys. I know some people have been concerned. Now, with that being said, the tank is leaking. 
the care of the animals doesn't matter. They don't care if it's leaking, so they don't really care. And it's leaking so minutely, it's not a big deal. So I'm gonna turn the waterfall back on, clean this up a little bit, and then uh, in the next day or two, have to try to tackle the waterfall again. So uh, anyways, we'll get it, I promise. I will figure this out. And actually, it turns out that it's pretty good news. I know I promised you guys that this won't turn into a sloth vlog, and it won't. Hey, I'm a reptile guy, but I'm an animal lover. But I've gotta get my daily dose of this cutie right here. <laughs> this is Drogo. I mean, how absolutely amazing he is. He is something else. He spends a lot of time up in this hammock during the daytime. And then uh, usually about mid-afternoon, he cruises around the entire enclosure. And then at night, he's just, I, we showed you the footage the other day of him cruising around at night. He is out of control all over the place. So nevertheless, Drogo, uh, there's your little daily dose of the sloth. You know, it's been a minute since I updated you guys on Ben and Jerry. They're doing absolutely amazing. As a matter of fact, Chops, it's a two-headed turtle, needs to get over here soon. We're just working on an enclosure for that. So hopefully here pretty soon, we'll have Ben and Jerry, the two-headed snake, and again, Chopsticks, the two-headed turtle. That is growing extremely well, so it'll be over here too, so I can't wait for it. And you know, it's not always about just getting new animals. Don't get me wrong. As an animal guy, you love getting new stuff. It's exciting, but it's also exciting just to kind of figure something out. You know, now that we have that black throat monitor, I can kind of figure out how to actually take care of them, what he's going to like, and so on like that. Just like I have with all of these animals, you know, no different than Drogo. You know, getting a sloth was probably the biggest change for us, is trying to figure out how to take care of a mammal after my whole life taking care of reptiles. I've always said continuously that any reptile you throw at me, I'm gonna feel pretty comfortable with. The sloth was a different situation, but now it's been a few weeks and we're pretty much in control of that situation. We're feeling pretty confident and stuff like that. Nevertheless, uh, definitely Ben and Jerry are doing good. Chopsticks will be over here soon and, and getting new animals is cool, but I don't want you to think that I'm getting new animals just to get them. There's always a purpose for it, you know, an educational purpose, a hole in the zoo that I think we need, or maybe even a breeding project for BHB, you know? So I'm not just buying animals to buy animals. Uh, I do it because there's a reason for it. What the heck? Dude, you just ruined a tree! You knocked, Matilda, you knocked your tree down! <laughs> Matilda, I mean, literally, she was trying to climb the tree, and I came over and it was just timbering onto the ground. It's a great example of uh, having a tortoise. Yes. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Look at you, Matilda. What did you do? Oh my gosh. Ugh. You guys don't understand, that's a huge fix. I mean, that is a huge fix because that was bolted to the ground. I cannot believe you did that, Matilda. Oh, add one more thing to my list of things to do. There you have it. I am excited to have the black throat. And like I mentioned, we're probably going to get a larger black throat as well so we can do some educational stuff with that too and then have this one coming up. How amazing is that? Not to mention those ball pythons were dope, right? I always love unboxing things. If you guys enjoyed this video, as a matter of fact, right over here, there's a playlist of unboxing for as long as you want to watch. Up here, you can subscribe to my podcast channel. A bunch of really cool guests coming. You're definitely going to want to check that one out over on this side. I hope that you're subscribed to this vlog channel. If you're not, please hit the subscribe button and turn all your post notifications on. Have an absolutely wonderful day. Remember, be kind to someone and I promise I'll see you tomorrow.